The Franklin Park Zoo is a place to learn about wildlife from around the world, but this time of the year when the sun goes down, it's also the setting for a different kind of walk on the wild side. To tell us about the jack-o'-lantern journey is its artistic director, Bill Bywater. Thank you very much for being with us, Bill. My pleasure. Bill, uh, for somebody who goes there at night, what is this going to look like? It's a beautiful half-mile trail just after sunset with interesting designed themes, um, somewhat with a Halloween slant, and because we're at the zoo at Franklin Park, some of their themes have an animal angle to them. They have a mission statement at the zoo of um, being mindful of endangered species, and so some of that comes through a little bit. Where We have safari, we have zebras, a tiger, antelope, that just re-hints at their mission statement, as well as some endangered animal uh, art pumpkins, like the uh, bogo antelope, or the silverback gorilla. Well, uh, some of these things, they almost look like, you know, an animal like a zebra or a giraffe uh, made of pumpkins. I mean, I mean how, how do you make that work? <laughs> so for the bigger compositions, we call them structures, and we'll take 30 or more jack-o'-lanterns and group them together with a carpentry background. And that way, um, the leg of the tiger might be on two jack-o'-lanterns, the head is three jack-o'-lanterns, and we just keep building them that way. When you stand back far enough, about 25 or 30 feet, you see the whole composition together. It lets us to do um, bigger pieces, including a couple drafts that are 16 feet tall. Well, you're coming into this not because you have a pumpkin patch and you don't know what to do with it. You have a background, an uh, artistic background, right? That's right. I've got a bachelor's in studio art from College St. Rose in Albany. Um, and then I did an awful lot of work in theater, sculpting uh, in styrofoam props. And I've also been carving ice for 30 years. So Debbie Katz asked me to lead her creative team and draw on my background of set design, working with artists, coming up with concept drawings, and bringing it to fruition. Uh, on the stage, guests get to sit in one place and see the story unfold. But here, it's a trail, so as you walk down the trail, there's different themes, like dinosaurs, or under the seas, or uh, Boston colleges. Well, for, for most of us, pumpkin sculpture just means, you know, cutting out the eyes and nose and the mouth. But you, you take pieces of pumpkins, you stick them together. Uh, th there's one shot we have of, of, of an elephant. Uh, how, how does that come together? So it needs the carpentry background to hold it up. And then using different shaped pumpkins, we can suggest the eyebrows and the trunk and the cheek and just build it out of different components. That's a daylight sculpture, I think the one that you're referring to, but most of the show is a nighttime jack-o'-lantern sculpture uh, inst in installation. So those are all lit from inside. Everything that you see there at the jack-o'-lantern show is lit from inside. We have some pieces that are 3D displays uh, to let people know about the show ahead of time. Those are seen in daylight. Uh, this is BNN News, and we're talking about Jack o' Lantern Journey with its artistic director, Bill Bywater. Uh, Bill, a, a lot of us can see some things like this walking around the neighborhood, a little of this, a little of that. But uh, explain the difference. When you, when you go to Franklin Park Zoo, this, this is, mm -hmm. you're out in the park. It's almost like being in the woods, in the wild. What's the atmosphere well, like? They've got a great trail that runs through a wooded section here at the zoo. We've taken it over for the month to make our trail here. So you also hear the leaves under your feet. You smell the carved pumpkins. Each of the themes have different soundtracks that go with them to, to uh, reinforce what, what you're seeing there, you hear, hear like a thumping of the dinosaurs, boom, 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 with the soundtrack. And then uh, I've got a skeleton riding a motorcycle, so he's got a, a, uh, a bad to the bones soundtrack behind him with a rrrm, roar. So it's a smell, sight, hearing, uh, immersive experience. Plus, a, a few salutes, maybe things like the Red Sox, popular entertainers, uh, that's going to be in the mix as well Absolutely. Here? We've got a sports section there with all the, the, the Boston uh, uh, sports teams featured. And then we also have Boston history, uh, a section with Faneuil Hall, USS Constitution, Paul Revere, and the Boston Harbor. They each have their own art pumpkin. Well, in designing this, uh, you want it to appeal to kids uh, you even want to scare them a little bit? <laughs> so we've got the graveyard, and there's some skeletons there and some spooky music, but even the artwork there is, is, is something to take note of. There's interesting lighting, a little smoke and fog, and then a soundtrack that goes with it. So, again, it's a little bit spooky, gives you the Halloween feeling, um, 
but not over the top. No one chasing you with a chainsaw. Well, uh, this is not something you're going to see if you're going to the zoo in the daytime because it just won't look as interesting. But if people uh, want to come by at night, uh, so how can they do that? So you can get your tickets online at jackolanternjourney.com. We have discounts right now for 40% on certain time slots. Uh, again, jackolanternjourney.com. That's the way you can buy your tickets. And if you can't remember that, go to the Franklin Park Zoo website, and there'll be a link there. Thank you very much for being with us. My pleasure. Bill Bywater from Jacqueline and Journey. BNN News is produced by Boston Neighborhood Network with support from Boston University's College of Communication. 